Major funding for this program provided by the Moving Image Trust Fund. Additional funding for this program provided by the Arkansas Agriculture Department. Hello, I'm Tony Brooks, and this is Agri Arkansas. One of the hardest workers in all of agriculture is the honeybee. In fact, the great seal of the state of Arkansas, first adopted back in 1864, features a beehive, among other symbols of agriculture. And in 1974, the honeybee was named Arkansas's state insect. Let's take a closer look now at the honeybee in Arkansas. If all the bees were to suddenly disappear, we would not starve to death right away, but uh, most of the variety that we enjoy on our dinner plates would begin to disappear. I'm John Zavishlock, and I'm the honeybee specialist for the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Cooperative Extension Service. Uh, I kind of got into beekeeping when I worked for a professor a few years ago who was a beekeeper and uh, the more that I uh, worked with the honeybees, the, the more I grew to appreciate them and, and was fascinated by them and I, so I decided to learn more about them and it evolved into a full-time career. Hello girl. Honeybees are important to us because they pollinate uh, about a third of, of the food that makes up our diet as, as humans. Um, about a hundred important crops are dependent on insect pollination and honeybees do the large majority of that pollination work. So it's, it's very important to attract them for our farm in particular. We, we need more honeybees, we need more orchard bees to come out and pollinate the, the blackberry crop. Honeybees are very important to any flowering crop. You know there's, there's basically uh, two times of the year that the, that the vineyards smell heavenly. And uh, one is, is uh, harvest, when the grapes are ripe. To, but the other one is actually when the grapes are flowering uh, in the spring of the year. And that's when the, uh, the, the honeybee will really go to work. To get the honey out, we have to put on our soup. And then we have to go. We have bees. Bees are an important part of that, any agricultural uh, farm. So, and it's just great to, to have them here for our garden as well, for the increased yields that we get and the joy of seeing bees out in your garden. So, uh, Here in Arkansas, the honeybee is our state insect. It's traditionally a, a symbol of uh, industriousness and hard work. And it's responsible for pollinating a lot of our favorite fruits and vegetables. That includes apples and peaches and uh, a lot of berries such as blackberries, also watermelons, cucumbers, squash. And bees are also very important for making honey. To me, it is a fascinating insect. That's the only insect that we are able to get a food item to, that we can use and eat from. It takes 12 of these little ladies, which are our worker bees, to make a teaspoon of honey in their lifetime. They work around the clock. They literally work themselves to death. There's essentially three different types of bees inside the hive. Uh, we have one queen bee, and she's kind of important. She is the mother of all the other bees in the hive. She's the only bee that lays eggs, and she also produces uh, important pheromones, chemicals that uh, kind of bind the hive together and uh, keep it running and functional. The queen lays an egg. After a few days, it hatches into this little grub-like creature. And these worker bees that you see walking around on this frame are busy feeding them. They feed them for about six days, and then by at that point, they are ready to go through metamorphosis, just like a caterpillar 
spins a cocoon and turns into a butterfly. Uh, the other type of bee is a drone bee. The male bees are drones and they don't really do any job inside the hive. Their sole purpose is just to mate with a queen bee. And once they're done with that, then they die and they're out of the way. Right there is a drone. A little bit bigger, a little bit more blunter in size. And his sole purpose is to mate with the queen. And in another two or three weeks, the bees will be driving the drones out of the house. Most of the bees inside the hive are worker bees. They're all female bees. They do all the jobs inside the hive. They take care of the eggs and the larvae. Uh, they also go out and gather all the, the nectar. They pollinate all the crops. Uh, they bring all that food home and uh, they turn it into honey and they're the ones that make all the beeswax and they're also the only ones that can sting. We all start out being terrified of bees. You know, we don't have any experience with them, but the longer you work with them, the more you realize that the big thick suits and the heavy leather gloves just really get in your way. If you're allergic to honeybees, if you know you're allergic or have a severe allergic reaction, you know, you know stay away from them. But bees aren't going to bother you um, without, without being provoked for the most part. The smoke doesn't necessarily calm the bees down. It masks the scent um, that the bees will put off. Bees are gentle creatures. As long as we don't jostle them around too much, they don't mind us taking a peek to see what it is that they're doing. And you can see these guys here have uh, been collecting honey. So this honey at the top here, they put a little wax lid on each of the cells. So this honey is ready to go. It's ready for the beekeeper to harvest and put into a jar. You can bring it home and put it on your table. They're able to produce excess honey that allows us to be able to take off anywhere from 30 to 80 pounds of honey per hive. I live in Sherwood, Arkansas. I am a, uh, been an apiculturist or beekeeper for about 52 years. I uh, operate, do all of my extracting here in my backyard uh, in a 12 by 20 shed. Pull off anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 pounds of honey a year. So I start extracting honey usually the 1st of June. My first process that I'm, is going out to the bee yard, opening up a hive, and uh, pulling out a frame to make sure I have at least 90% of all those the uh, cells sealed over. With that then I will uh, remove the bees out of the super because you don't want to bring them back into the honey house. <laughs> and all the bees do not get out of the super so I use a leaf blower. I uh, weigh each of my boxes so I can get a, uh, a net weight of what comes out of each box. Or I have a, a, a neat little pizza ringer roller that I run the frames through. It slices the seals and opens them up and allows me to put them into my 18 frame extractor. And with that, turning around centrifugal force pulls the honey out of the cells. Slams it up against the barrel and down to the bottom of the tank and, and out of a spigot. And there comes the golden honey out of the... Uh, it is the only food product that you do not have to refrigerate, pasteurize. It has its own natural antibiotics in it, and it will keep indefinitely. It's been noted that they have found honey in the Egyptian tombs, over 3,000 years old, and still edible. It's a fiduciary uh, relationship. Uh, the, the bees are, are critical to, to, a, to a good glass of wine. Uh, how about it? Cheers to the honeybee. Well, Arkansas is heavily dependent on agriculture, and agriculture is heavily dependent on the honeybees. So by supporting honeybees, you're supporting our state's agriculture. According to the Arkansas Beekeepers Association website, honeybees pollinate over 90 important crops and are responsible for about one-third of our diet. You may have heard in the news recently of a phenomenon called a colony collapse disorder the unexplained die-off of worker bees in the colony. CCD has affected millions of beehives across 22 states, and scientists are at a loss as to why. 
My name is Eamon Minnick and I work for the Arkansas State Plant Board as an apiary inspector. The plant board is a division of the Arkansas Agriculture Department. I like to call myself a helper more than an inspector. Ready? For anybody who wants to move bees within the state, out of state or bring them into the state, they have to have a health inspection. Um, and if they're selling bees, the same goes, they have to have a health inspection. And the health inspection is mainly to, um, to help control the spread of diseases and pests that can be transferred from, from hive to hive. Uh, these guys are getting their bees ready to go to California. Um, every year, several commercial beekeepers from, from Arkansas um, ship bees to California for almond pollination and that's what these guys are doing. Uh, they're getting them staged up and ready to, to load on the, the tractor trailers um, in a couple days. The number one threat to bees across the country and in, a, and in other countries for that matter is, uh, is the presence of a varroa mite and it, it's a pretty, pretty harmful little parasite. CCD or colony collapse disorder um, it was it was branded CCD uh, by a beekeeper from Pennsylvania in November of 2006 who was overwintering colonies in Florida um, from the early 1990s up until 2006 colony losses across the country had had remained fairly stable and in 2006 they spiked to up, upwards of 30 percent and all the way up to 90 percent in some cases it's not necessarily a new issue. Um, honeybee losses sharing the similar symptoms as CCD, what we call CCD, have been reported as early as 1869. Um, and it, it's, it's been called, over the years, it's been called several different things. Mystery disease, disappearing disease, um, fall dwindle. And I'm not saying that it's exactly the same thing as what we've been, you know, or what has happened in the past that, that people weren't able to really explain. Um, we do know that the, the, the environment that honeybees are living in now um, is, is quite a bit different than it was back then. And even, even 30 years ago, things have changed quite a bit. It's a lot tougher to keep them alive. Um, it, it, it's a struggle. I mean, we have to fight these pests. We have to fight the, the varroa mite, um, keeping it under control with the use of, of pesticides has, has puts a little bit extra stress on the bees themselves and the agriculture environment has changed quite a bit in, in that time period too. The President Obama has, has created recently created a, uh, a, a, a special task force to develop a national pollinator health strategy to better understand and develop methods to to help recover some of these uh, pollinator lo population losses. Um, not just honeybees, but even our uh, even our native pollinators. You know, we need all the help we can get, and, and I think that uh, you know honeybees are very, very important. And, and here in Arkansas, they serve a vital role to the agriculture community um, through their pollination of, of crops and honey production. Um, you know, it, it's a they serve a multi-million dollar role in Arkansas. And nationally, in U.S. The U.S. agriculture, they're just in pollination alone. Honeybees are responsible. They estimate the value to be around 20 billion dollars annually. I wouldn't say panic. You know, I'm, I I I think we're managing. It's been it's been kind of a struggle, but we're getting a lot of help with with the advancements that we have made and in the progress that we are making. I th I think we're going to be okay. Um, it, it's, it's tough to really, really say, but panic, no. As you just heard, CCD hasn't affected the natural state yet, but partly as a reaction to the threat, there has been an uptick in the number of backyard beekeepers in Arkansas, and the Baxter family is one of them. Um, growing things has never worked. <laughs> so I figured I could do something like these and keep them alive. Alright, get your 
us. We've been doing it. This is our second summer, so a year and a half. Well, we do homeschool, and so we decided to take the class, the beekeeping class, as like a science supplement. You see the queen? I don't see the queen. It's really cool, and I think that other people should do it. Uh, I was I was good with it. I mean, she's always wanted to do something like chickens or something, and, didn't I, want and I never wanted chickens, so I figured bees would be a. Uh, a, a little bit more manageable than chickens. I see a drone, I think. We'll uh, inspect the combs to make sure that the that <clears throat> they're storing honey for themselves. Um, we'll also look to see that the queen is laying eggs and that there's larva in there, so we know that she's still in there. We have some hive beetle traps in there to, to catch some pests, some hive beetles that will get in the hive and infect it. So in the middle is uh, apple cider vinegar to help, the, which they're attracted to. And then on the outside where they get trapped is just uh, oil. We'll feed them. We feed them in the spring and um, late fall when there's not many uh, plants producing nectar. We'll help them out a little bit. We feed them sugar water. So in the spring we feed them a one-to-one -one sugar water ratio. And then in the fall we feed them a little bit thicker mixture of like a two-to-one sugar water mixture. Spray? Oh. Standard spray. I mostly do the smoking and stuff. When the bees get angry, their smell, it smells like bananas. Uh, the smoke masks their alarm pheromones. And so when, when one of the bees gets alarmed or stings, they'll release this alarm pheromone that alerts the whole rest of the hive that something bad is happening. We've never been stung. Um, the, the dogs, if they run up to it and mess with it, then they might get stung, but, uh, I they've mean... They've learned their lesson. But they, yeah, they've <laughs> learned to just stay away, and, and if you're just here in the... I mean, we could be back here and playing, doing whatever in the backyard, and we'll be fine. They were doing good, but all of a sudden, they got agitated all of a sudden. Well, we get the honey, and we get the wax, and we get the propolis. I made some lip balm and other things with the wax, and we're going to make propolis tincture, and so we get more than just honey, and that's nice. The beekeeping as a family has been really great. And there is a lot of support these days. There's a lot of groups that are doing beekeeping, a lot of clubs. There's a lady beekeepers club that I go to every once in a while. Um, and there's classes and things happening all the time and new stores opening locally that are selling, they, you know, selling beekeeping supplies. We're, we're trying to carry a full line of bee supplies, anything you'd need from extracting honey to uh, back to uh, beginner kits for people who are just barely, or just now getting started into the beekeeping, uh, backyard beekeeping. Uh, we sell bees, uh, honey bees in the spring, we sell packages, we're working towards selling nukes. Uh, a nucleus hive is a nuke. Uh, it's basically a starter hive that's already got some frames in it. We're, we're kind of gearing towards beginner beekeepers and the education behind what you need to know to get started. It definitely draws everybody together. Well, and it's been really rewarding, especially doing it as a family. It's getting easier to do, and it's just, it, it's really rewarding. If you'd like more information about starting your own backyard beekeeping operation, you can go to the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service website. Joining us now, John Zvislak, the ap apiculture, it's apiculture instructor with the University of Arkansas, and Desiree Baxter, a beekeeping enthusiast. Welcome to both of you, and I'll, I'll pronounce that correctly before we're through with this. John, let's start with you. How many uh, commercial apiary operations are there in Arkansas now? Uh, it kind of depends on how you, you really break that down, uh, but we probably have less than a dozen people that com consider themselves commercial beekeepers. Let's talk a little bit more about that task force that we saw mentioned in there that's uh, out to deal with colony collapse disorder, which fortunately we don't have here, but this is kind of, kind of a mystery. We really don't know what causes that or, or a whole lot about it yet, do we? No, we don't have all the answers, but we're trying to narrow it down. There's researchers all over the country that are participating in, in different aspects of it, and it seems to be a collection of a lot of different factors. It includes uh, 
parasites and diseases of honeybees in particular, but also a lot of environmental factors. Uh, poor nutrition for honeybees because of uh, habitat loss and, and changes in uh, land use all over the country. And also there are a lot of uh, pesticides and, and pollutants and other things in the environment that bees never had to deal with historically and that seem to be more prevalent today. Is the Arkansas environment good for beekeeping? A lot of places in Arkansas are still very good for keeping bees. Uh, the places that produce the most honey for bees are the places also that have the most row crop agriculture. Okay. And a lot of the threats you talked about, I, n I never heard of before. We talk about the, the foul brood and hive beetles. Can you tell me a little bit about what those are? I mean, I, I know they're parasites, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, foul brood is a bacterial disease, and it's uh, very, very lethal and very contagious amongst honeybees, but it's harmless for any other creature. And it is a well-known disease historically. Uh, it's been around a long time, but uh, we have very fairly low incidence of it in Arkansas because we do have a very good inspection program here, and we try to be very uh, educated, all of our beekeepers, to, to know what it is and to identify it. And uh, when it is identified, we try to get rid of it as quickly as possible before it spreads. It would be devastating. It would be very devastating, particularly in a, a large operation. Okay. You know, we learned in that piece about the importance of bees in the pollinization process. About a hundred varieties of crops benefit from the honeybee. And I remember back when I was a, a youngster living in the Booth Hill, Missouri, and we raised cotton, uh, they kept bees, uh, I guess, to, to aid with the pollinization of cotton. But uh, we also use pesticides to fight cutworms and boll weevils. How big a problem is that in Arkansas, farmers using pesticides for other crops, row crops, for example? Pesticides can be a problem, uh, particularly if the, uh, the bees or the beehives are directly sprayed with the pesticides. But as long as the, uh, the pesticide applicators are, are a little bit vigilant about where they use them around the bees and, and what time of the day that they're sprayed, uh, bees can still be kept safely in, in those types of areas. Uh, most of the bees are done foraging in the field after about three or four in the afternoon, so if they apply pesticides kind of later in the afternoon, early evening, then bees are really not going to be terribly affected by a lot of them. And we, I want to go back to the, the parasites and the bacteria that, that affect bees. Uh, how treatable are those? I noticed that there were some chemicals, some medications, I guess, if you will, you were using. Are, are those very effective? Uh, some of them are effective. There really is no good medical cure for American fowl brood disease. Uh, some of the other diseases there are some treatments for, uh, and the, the pests and the parasites, um, we have medications that, that work somewhat, but there's really no silver bullet that takes care of everything. Okay. Nisra, your family is somewhat new to, uh, to beekeeping. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and some of the benefits of your operation. We got started um, because we were friends with John, and John was teaching the uh, homeschool youth-specific beekeeping class. So um, we took it just as a supplement to our homeschooling, um, and j you know, as a science class. Okay. Uh, we talked about the production of honey and wax, but you also mentioned uh, propolis, mm -hmm. which is the substance that the bees use to seal the hive, is that correct? Mm -hmm. They coat the entire hive with it. And it's amazing stuff. It's antimicrobial, antibacterial, um, anti, I don't even know, viral. Now, is that something you use yourself or is this something that is commercially, you can sell that and, and it can be used in other places, is it? Uh, we couldn't sell it, we don't make enough, but we just kind of, we collect it from our hive We'll kind of scrape some off if they've got a little extra or when we're cleaning off our equipment and we will, we, we've saved it up in a jar and we'll eventually make a tincture out of it and then make um, lozenges and other things from that. And it looks like the entire family's involved in the operation. Yeah. Does, that, does everybody have their own job or just? Um, everybody but the littlest, yeah. We all kind of have our own thing that we do and um, Xander, my son, likes the smoker. That's his favorite part. <laughs> Okay, and harvesting, do you have the same equipment when you harvest the honey as the, with the centrifuge or do you, do you guys mm -hmm. know about this? We actually, we borrow John's centrifuge. Okay. <laughs> now, at, at the end there, we were talking about the kits that, that people could purchase if they wanted to get into to beekeeping. Uh, if someone wanted to get started in this, 
what's, what's the ideal situation for someone that, that wanted to get into beekeeping? I think the ideal situation would be to take a class to get that support and that mentorship and that knowledge base um, and then going from there. Okay. Now, as far as land, do you need to have a large area? Do you need to live on a farm to, to no, keep No, because we live in the middle of the city and we've got our beehive and our bees have done really well. Okay. Very good. And, and we have the hives and you have that, but I, I'm really interested in how you get the bees. Now, I mean, if, if you get started and you want to just acquire a, a beekeeping operation, how do you start? How do, how do you get them the bees? Uh, well, you need your hive, and then you need to get on a list for a package of bees. Um, and they come in the mail. The mail delivers a three-pound package of bees, and that's what you start with. Now, does that package include? The it includes um, three pounds of worker bees and a queen. Okay. So that as those bees, as you have them, they're going to produce more worker mm -hmm. bees and then all, all the bees. So your hive can continue to grow. Yeah, it it's gets a lot bigger than three pounds of bees. So. How big of an operation do you hope to have someday? Oh, not big at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to stop with maybe two hives, two or three. Okay. That, that's about our limit. And that's probably, to be honest, how much our area could probably handle. Well, it looks like it's a lot of fun and certainly educational. Mm -hmm. So well, we sure appreciate you guys coming by and being with us today. Thanks. We're all out of time. That's all we have for today. And we thank you both for talking with us. And we thank you for joining us. And we will be happy to see you next time on Agri Arkansas. I'm Tony Brooks. Major funding for this program provided by the Moving Image Trust Fund. Additional funding for this program provided by the Arkansas Agriculture Department.